What's up everybody and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. As you can see I'm wearing my Boston hat today. Thinking about all the crazy things that are unfolding, watching on the news, and seeing all the, the crazy shit that's happening up there in Boston and kind of taking a second to reflect and you know realize how crazy things can get. I'm just glad that, you know, they're finally getting to the bottom of what's going on and they're gonna catch these guys that had uh, wreaked all the havoc up there. But Anyways, I got an email this morning from my boy Cliff Ward, who's out in Japan, who I'm working with now. <clears throat> and he asked me a question that I thought was pretty good, so I figured I would go ahead and make a video about it. He asked, when he goes on a bulk, so right now he's in a cutting phase, when he goes on a bulk, how much could he expect to gain on his bulk? And it dawned on me, I said, this is something maybe a lot of people don't understand. You know, I see a lot of things like starting my diet, starting my training program, looking to gain 30 pounds looking to gain 15, looking to gain this, and I realize you guys don't really understand how it works. Now, there's no answer to how much you're going to gain. Nobody can answer that. It's so individual from person to person that the only way you're going to know how much you gain is at the end of your bulk is how much you've gained. And whatever you have gained is 100% genetic. If you took 10 guys in the gym, gave all 10 of them the right program that would help them build muscle and bulk, and all things being the same, one guy's going to gain 5 pounds, one guy may gain no weight, one guy may gain 20 pounds. It just depends. On my first, even this even goes with anabolics too. Individual response to the anabolics varies so widely from person to person that my first cycle that I did with my training partner, he gained about 15 pounds total in the 10, 12 weeks that we were using, and I gained almost 60. Now, there's no reason that we weren't doing anything different. The difference was my body had a different genetic response to the drugs and the stimulus, of the weight training with the drugs and that's what allowed me to gain the weight. So, you know, depending on your genetics, you are either going to gain fast or you're going to gain slow. And there's really nothing you can do about it. If you're gaining slow, you can't beef it up and gain faster because what's going to happen is you're just going to gain fat. So what's one to do? I mean, you you stick to your program and at the end of your bulk. If you're not happy with what you gain, you take maybe four weeks break, then you go on another bulk. The idea is to not get fat while you're bulking. So if you're getting fat, then I would say your bulk is done. Drop your body fat back to a level that you know is sustainable, easily sustainable, but not fat. And then give it some time, keep training, and then you know diet down for a little bit so that you're really lean. Then go on another bulk so that your body fat, when it goes back up, will maintain to that that natural level again and not make you fat. Okay. Now I was watching a video last night on I think it was at FIBO. Dave Palumbo and Milo Sarshev. Now, I'm going to link it in the box. I know there's a box somewhere. But I'm going to upload this from my phone onto YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and put the link. So if you watch the video and you don't see the link, look back later because the link will be there. About how Milo's trained Flex Wheeler. Okay? And Flex was 208 skinny fat five weeks before the Arnold. Wanted to do the Arnold. Milo started training him. And in three weeks, that's three. One, two, three. Three weeks Flex was 240-something pounds and was lean enough to go into the Ironman and get third behind Jay Cutler and somebody else. Three weeks. That's a genetic response to drugs, training. I mean, some people say muscle memory. Muscle memory might ask. You don't gain 40-something pounds in three weeks with muscle memory. It's his genetic response to training. Now, some of you don't know who Milos is. This is something that I've had for quite a while. And this is the Milos documents. Milos was known to be training some of the top guys in the late 90s. And I used to know a girl who was dating one of Milos' clients. And when they broke up and she moved back to Rhode Island, she had the Milos documents. And she asked me if I wanted them. And what this includes is the entire program that Milos Sarshev hand wrote for this individual. And this talks about everything. I mean, this talks about drug stacks, I mean, steroids, it talks about how to arrange the foods the right way, it talks about cardio, it talks about insulin, it talks about growth hormone, it talks about GH releasers, it talks about all this stuff in here, off-season and pre-contest, and although this is not, you know, new stuff, it's all the same stuff that's in here, Milos definitely had a way of doing his, his thing, but it wasn't so different that it would make Flex gain 40-something pounds in, you know, three weeks. Because I can do this same program and I'm not going to gain 40-something pounds. And the guy that was doing this program that, you know, was dating my friend, 
he didn't gain 40 something pounds in three weeks. It was a completely genetic response to how Flex trains and how his body absorbs nutrients, how his body utilizes the drugs, et cetera, et cetera. So at the end of your bulk, if you've only gained three or four pounds of lean tissue, which that's an enormous amount to begin with. If you did a 10 week bulk and you gained three pounds of lean muscle tissue and you're natural, you should pat yourself on the back and give yourself a self high five because that's a ridiculous amount of weight of muscle mass to gain. But if you're done and you've only gained 10 pounds and you've, you know, not much measurable muscle, but you gained some fat, that's how it goes. You know, you didn't do anything wrong. You couldn't do anything better. You know, maybe try to stay a little bit leaner, but you're only going to gain what you're going to gain, and that's going to be it. It doesn't matter what you, what program you try. If you're doing a bulk, you're going to gain X amount, and that's just how it is. Ronnie Coleman, for instance, before he made that big dramatic change that he did, he was stuck at a level that, it was a good bodybuilder, you know, but he was like, you know, sitting down like the 10th place or something at the Olympia. And it wasn't until people started telling him, well, this is what we're doing. Flex Wheeler, this is how I'm training. This is the drugs I'm using. This is how we're using them. And the top guys at that time were all using the same stuff. They frequently talk about everybody was using the same stuff. And they were all using trend. They were all using this, all using that. And Ronnie took the same drugs that they were using and then surpassed them all. And it wasn't a, a secret drug stack. It wasn't a secret drug. It was the same stuff everybody else was taking. But his genetic response to those drugs made him surpass everyone else. Again, genetics. Dorian Yates, the same thing. People, oh, he took a IV growth hormone. He did this, he did all sorts of crazy stuff. No, he didn't. He had genetics to be very grainy, hard, and dry to begin with. He was a very strong guy to begin with. And he took the same things everyone else did and trained his ass off and surpassed everyone because at that time, his genetics to absorb the drugs, the food, the training, all that stuff, we're simply better than everybody's at the time. And, you know, he'll tell you straight out. People would say, oh, you know, he didn't have the best genetics. No, for shape, he didn't have the best genetics. But for his mass, graininess, and strength, which are three very important things in bodybuilding, he had the genetics. So it all boils down to genetics is how much you're going to gain during your bulk or how much you're going to put on over the course of a year or how much you're going to put on when you go on gear, how much you're going to, you know, but what you're ultimately going to end up at the end of your training career is all based on your genetics. And there's not much you can do about your genetics. BioStreetTraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. Check back for the link that's going to be in one of these sides over here somewhere. BioStreetTraining at gmail.com uh, is the blog, and we're out.